Hey everybody, today I'm back in Dream Car Builder. Now I've made quite a few planes in the game so far, but funnily enough, I've never actually made a car. So the plan for this week is to make a car that can convert into a plane. Also guys, I hate to ask so early in the video, but if you would consider subscribing, it really helps out this video and my channel a lot. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So I load into the sandbox, just like I normally do with these, and I'm clearing the design, so I just start with the seat in the middle. And now I'm doing something I also usually do in these, which is just make a basic frame so I can start building stuff off of it. Now the only thing that's gonna be different about this video is opposed to the other ones is I'm focusing more on the car aspect as opposed to the plane aspect. So my order of doing things is a little messed up. So here I just have that basic frame I put together and this is where things are going to start deviating a little bit. So you see I put those two framing pieces in and I'm putting wheels on them and I'm focusing on the suspension first and then I'm going to go to the wings which is a reversal of what I usually do. So I just have two framing pieces so it just falls straight into the car but I can fix this by adding in a couple of springs and adding two more framing pieces attaching it to the frame of the car up top. And this creates a shape that I can sort of distort the angles of and abuse to be able to pull in one side and lift up the wheels. So to pull it in I'm going to be using these two rods and what I can do is tell the rods to contract when I press P on my keyboard and when I press P it sort of lifts in the wheels but what actually ends up happening is it falls apart because I didn't brace things enough. So after adding in two more framing pieces and two more springs to make it a bit stiffer you can sort of see what I'm getting at. So by pulling in the spring with the rod it begins to sort of drop the suspension slightly. Now I'm going to need something up bit more dramatic than that, so I tell the rods to contract even more than before. And this gets me somewhere that's a little bit closer. The only problem is when I tell it to re-expand, it just breaks the geometry. So to fix that, I move to a one rod setup, which is a little simpler, but it still sort of just falls apart. So I have to add in a few more supporting pieces again. And this rod's going through the guy's face, which is fantastic. But if I give it a try now, you can see the suspension gets pulled almost all the way into the car. And then when I expand out, it gets pushed back out. So this is good, but I wanted to go a little bit further. So I tried removing the rod down a little bit, and it didn't seem to do too much. I moved it down even more, and when I tried to re-expand, it just broke. But I ended up finding out just moving the rod up solved my problem and pulled the wheels in basically all the way, and then would still be able to expand out. So I was pretty happy with that, so I decided to move it to the back as well. And this will be the exact same mechanism, so I'll have a way to contract both of the wheels at the same time. So after putting that in and then just bracing the frame together, I decided to give it a quick test. And you can see for the most part it works. But when I re-expand, the framing pieces attached to the wheels can distort. And this was actually an easy enough thing to fix, all I had to do was just brace it together with a couple more framing pieces. And after doing that, it holds itself up. But there's still a few problems left with this car. And one of them is that it's still like really skinny and just looks weird. So I expanded that out a bit, and I also realized I could optimize this just a little bit. I didn't need to have a rod on the front and back landing gear mechanism, since they're the exact same mechanism. I could just have one rod and use a linkage to attach the back one to the front one. And you can see they both expand and contract in the same way. Now, cars need engines, so it's about time to put that in. So I basically just put that in the back. I didn't really think of why that's going to be a problem, which it will be. So after supporting that and then connecting a transmission to the back wheels, I decided to throw the car off the building and see what would happen. You have died. So after that, it was time to do the steering. So I have a couple framing pieces in the front, and they'll expand and contract to rotate the front axle. Now this isn't a perfect solution for steering, as it does lift up one of the wheels slightly, but I was hoping that the suspension would end up kind of balancing this out and allowing the other wheel to hit the ground. Now, it was good enough, and I also figured if it was going to be a problem, I could just fix it in the future. Now, I'm also not very good at driving, so I'm not demoing this very well, but it sort of works, and I end up clipping myself into a building here, which I guess is a win, why not? Now, I had realized when I was driving, a big problem was that this thing was very tail heavy. So I got rid of a few pieces from the back, and also tried to move the engine a bit further forwards, but it didn't really help that much, and the car immediately did a wheelie again. So I moved the engine even further forwards, and in this test it improved a lot, but you can see the front wheels are still off the ground, which makes steering literally impossible. So with that, I wasn't really too happy, so I got rid of the engine, and decided to base it off the front axle instead. So after reconnecting the transmission and supporting it a bit more, you can see the car's suspension works great, it's able to be powered, it doesn't immediately do a wheelie, I still can't drive, which, whatever, but I'm sure someone who's actually good at the game could drive it, so I'll consider that good. Now the next thing I want to work on is the actual plane portion of the car plane thing. So I'm focusing on the wings now, and I'm just defining the basic structure for them with a few framing pieces. So after playing around with it for a little bit and getting something that I liked enough, I wanted to focus on the structure for it. So I'm basically just using a bunch of pyramids and holding the pyramids together with a few framing pieces to support it in the air. And after connecting the wings to the body, you can see structure works out great looks about right. 
It's not going to lift itself off the ground though until I have these panels in place, and that's what I'm adding in now. Now these panels, I need to increase their lift coefficient so that they'll actually generate some lift. And after doing that, getting up the speed, I don't really get off the ground until I start playing some games with the suspension. And basically just by forcing myself off the ground, you can see the wings sort of carry me along. So the wings work, I guess, and that's really all I wanted to test there. Now I need some way to be able to fold in the wings, because when I'm in car mode, I don't want to be able to see the wings at all. So I'm using a couple rods on each wing, and by expanding them out, the hope is that I'll be able to contract them into like a ball so they'll hide away. Now there I didn't set the rods correctly, so they sort of just did whatever they wanted to. But after adjusting some of their settings, you can see kind of what I'm going for. So the wings here sort of begin to fold up, and they're not into the body of the plane yet, but I'm hoping I could use a few more rods in the wings to be able to contract them even more. So just for fun, I wanted to try contracting these while I was driving. And it made the car very top heavy, which just made it instantly fail. So I'm replacing a few more of the framing pieces with rods, like I said before. And now you can see it contracts even further than it did, except it deformed a little bit too much there. And this ended up being harder than I thought it was going to. So I had to lower the structure piece of the wings. And this began to give me some results. Now this first one ended up just basically shrinking the wings, which didn't really help me that much. So by playing with the compressions just a little bit more, I got this design, which looks like ears maybe. It wasn't really going the way I'd like though. It wasn't contracting into the body of the plane, it was more just forcing itself above the plane. So I decided to scrap all those rods and focus on a different solution instead. But this time I actually had a good idea for what I was doing, it wasn't just hoping things would fold into the right spot. So the idea is that I have a mechanism that's similar to like how a door would work, where the wing's going to be rotating on some hinge, and is able to rotate into the plane and fold away in that sense. So I decided to delete a lot of the panels just to simplify it, and now I'm putting in that hinge like I described before. Before. So I just have to support it with a few framing pieces, and then I have to connect the rest of the panel pieces to the bottom of the hinge. And after doing that, the rods can contract in, and sort of rotate the wings into the plane. Now it sort of worked there, I didn't brace it enough so the geometry ended up just breaking, but after bracing it a little bit more, you can see how the wings fold in, and they can fold out. So since that was working out pretty well, I decided to add in the other panel pieces. Now here's the second one, and you can see it just folds into the plane, and it folds out just like before. So now with the folding mechanism working out how I'd like, I wanted to focus on some sort of mid-air controls to the plane. So I'm adding in two sets of panels here. I accidentally connected them together and you'll see that's going to be a problem in the future. But what I can do is just by adding in a few more of these pyramid framing structures and then a rod connecting it to the rest of the wing, when I expand and contract the rod, it should force up and down those sections of panels. Now there I connect them together and you see it completely broke. But after separating them and adding in a second set of rods for the flaps, you can see as I try to tell it to roll left and right, the ailerons expand and contract. And as we move forwards and backwards, the flaps move up and down. So I decided to go for a test flight here, just to see if I could get off the ground. And after getting up to speed, then deploying the wings, you see I actually did get off the ground, but the moment I leave the ground, the wheels are no longer speeding me up, so I just lose my speed and then fall back to the ground. So I add in some jets that I'm able to continue gaining speed while I'm in the air. And I also add in a tail to give me a bit more stability since I was sort of rotating sideways there. So after doing that, I try to take off here, and I do get off the ground, but the jets just aren't that powerful, so I fall right back down. Now I didn't know this was the problem initially, so I went for some bigger wings, and it seemed pretty promising, so I drove up to the runway, deployed them out, and tried to launch the plane again. And after I got up to speed, I ended up taking off, and this is actually much better than before, so the bigger wings did help, but eventually I did just lose my speed and fell straight back down. Now I moved the back of the plane a bit further back, just so that the, when the wings fold in, they are contained in the plane and don't show out the back. And I replaced the jets with much stronger ones. And <laughs> they're pretty strong. They ended up just making the car go on its front wheels. But you can see now I'm easily able to take off and I'm gaining a lot of speed. So much so that the wings end up completely just jittering and breaking. Now this is something I was going to have to watch when I was flying. Because only when I got up to about 180 miles an hour they just freaked out. But realistically I had no reason to go that fast anyways so it was a pretty easy problem to manage. Now there's just a few more aesthetic things I want to focus on, like here when the wings fold in, they expand out the sides of the plane. So I just have to make the plane a bit wider than that, and now is sort of where I'm going to go crazy with panels and make this thing pretty. So I added a lot of framing pieces to put some panels on, and after doing that, I put a lot of panels on them. And so after that, I decided to seal up the top, and give it a quick test just to see what it was like. And for the most part, it worked out pretty well, and ended up containing everything inside. Now, the wings were sticking out just a little bit from the sides, which I was going to need to fix, but for the most part it was pretty good, and I wanted to focus on the nose of the plane. So 
So after adding in all those pieces there, worked on the tail, sealed that up, and now I made the plane green, because I've never made a green plane. I wanted to go for a different color than usual. Usually I go red or white, so I eh, thought it was pretty interesting. But now I wanted to test the landing gear, and it does stick out the sides of the plane just a little bit. So to fix that, I just shrunk in the landing gear a little bit, and expanded out the entire plane so that the wings of the plane didn't stick out as well. Now it ended up at this point being so fat and short, so I ended up making it a bit taller just so that it looked a little more realistic. And also I changed some of the green panels in the front with some glass ones so that the pilot could see out something. And after doing that, I got my final design here. Here. Now, in car mode, it works pretty well. It has a few problems, and one of them is that it has a not-so-awesome turning radius. It could be fixed pretty easily just by telling the rods to expand more than they are right now, but eh, for my purposes, it was working out pretty well, except for that one turn there. And now I'm trying it out in plane mode. Now, it was able to take off, it just took a little bit of playing with to get it to take off a of flat land by just contracting the landing gear, then re-expanding it to get it off the ground a little bit. And after that, it is able to get off the ground. and I can contract the landing gear, and sort of just go wherever I want with it. First person view is not amazing, but it exists. And here I ran into that problem from before where I was going too fast, I wasn't watching my speed, and then one of the wings started flapping all over the place and I lost a ton of speed. So I went for a totally intentional landing, and it actually wasn't too bad, the suspension bottomed out because I hit the ground pretty hard but I was able to convert it back into car mode and drive around for a bit. The suspension's actually pretty good on this thing. I was hitting the ground pretty hard here because I'm, well, not good at driving the car, but if I was, the suspension would actually be pretty solid. And I drove off this hill here and decided to convert it into plane mode and fly back to the city. And here I was gonna land on one of the streets, but I didn't really budget my speed and altitude correctly, so I just sort of fell to the ground too early. But car mode is still pretty good, the suspension was able to make up for it and I ended up just driving on this road. So guys, thanks for watching. Now, this thing isn't so good in car mode, and isn't so good in plane mode, but the idea was that it wasn't supposed to be the best car or best plane. It was just something that was supposed to be able to convert between the two, and just be also something that was kind of fun to make. So if you want to see more of this stuff, make sure to subscribe, like join my Discord server in the link in the description, and otherwise, yeah, until next time.